In the interest of making um, complications, I think that what I might do is very quickly clean this one up. Uh, Winston has showed us all the anatomy here. What uh, I was talking about, and he was saying he could clean this up for us. I'm going to do very quickly and show us that anatomy. And for then anybody who's interested, uh, they have, this patient has a little bit more complex frontal sinus anatomy on the opposite side, uh, because when Greg showed us with that balloon, we saw the superagrifrontal cell that goes past the ostium. Here you can see that uh, Winston had nicely broken away all these, but not taken away some of those ridges. Oh. Yeah. And then what I might do is just look up with the 70 degree to try to show us some of those. I just wanted to try to clean that posterior ethmoid so that you could see those boundaries that Winston was talking about and put the image guidance onto it. Sphenoidotomy, orbit going all the way up, skull base, posterior ethmoid uh, artery that is uh, there. And Winston didn't make that complication, but aimed for a different one here. And then I just want to show you about the importance of angled endoscopy because Winston had a 30 on, which kind of gave him a lot of that... Uh, a lot of that flexibility. Here's where I was talking about if you want to do something uh, anteriorly at the armpit, and we could talk about fancy axillary flaps, but really all I want to do. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, and then what we want to try to show is let's just switch over to all the angled. So I'll take the 70 scope. If you could put the rad 90 on and the 90 fusion, I think I see. I don't need it on suction. So what I think is going to be nice is. Winston has showed us all that anatomy. What's the difference when you look with a slightly angled versus exaggerated angled scope? Uh, I think that might be nice for us to just see. Uh, reverse, yeah. Reverse posted 70, takes a bit of getting used to. Uh, and what you'll see is that when we look up, I'm just going to focus it before we go. When we look up, what are we going to be able to identify? And I'm going to hope to show you those four walls that I talked about. So what you'll see is, is middle turbinate, and that's our boundary for uh, where we want to both orbit, which we saw dehiscent in one section of um, Winston's dissection. Here's that anterior boundary where this is the backside of the beak. And if you're seeing, hmm, is this thing tracking? Oh, it is tracking. We're having a bit of a problem with our magnet. Um, but let me see if I can put my hands so that it does show green. There's middle turbinate and that plane between the bulla, which Winston nicely came over and took the bulla almost to orbit. The orbit itself, and you can see the orbit in the whole plane. The anterior wall that I colored blue in the, in the dissection, I don't know why I can't make that work, but is the back side of the beak and, and the cellularity of the agar that'll be here. And so what I want to show you is that the artery is something, if we want to find, perfect, thank you, find the four walls uh, of this dissection, I'm going to show them to you again and I'll piece together that anatomy. Middle turbinate, orbit, beak anteriorly, Anterior ethmoid, artery, <laughs> anterior ethmoid artery, supraorbital ethmoid cell, and you can see that nicely on the sagittal, and then the true frontal sinus in front of it. And so the two tools I just want to show you are that when you are doing this, it's all about the setup of what you're seeing. So when we go and look up, everything is projecting us to look more anterior and take this down. And so what I would say is find the posterior ethmoid uh, skull base, come anterior, 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 until such time as it starts to turn up. That is where the anterior ethmoid artery is. And we can see it in this uh, actual dissection is hanging, and Winston cut through it, but it's hanging. Then let's try to see what those angled instruments do. Whether that's the, okay, I'm going to show you with a micro debrider or divider, um, so that we can see that, I'm going to try to just, okay, that, when we utilize an angled tool, we can come anteriorly and just give us better exposure and visualization of that. And I'm going to show you what happens when it gets too firm and what other tools you can use, because I showed them in my talk, that by taking away this anterior cell, that maximal aeration into that cell, that sinus, is going to look like this. And so you'll see that now we're changing that view. Here's where we have to start to worry, that this septation is OK between the frontal sinus itself and that superorbital ethmoid cell. You could do that by viewing the posterior table of the frontal sinus and then cutting backwards. I'm going to use, sorry, it doesn't work well. Oh. I'm just going to use the, there's a hoseman here I wanted to just show them. I showed you a couple tools, thank you, and then there's a hoseman somewhere, that one. I showed you a couple tools in, the, in my um, talk. This is the one that's just like a strong mushroom. And so when you're coming to the front edge of this, uh, agar cell or anterior cell, because I don't bother naming them so much as just knowing that the frontal sinus drainage pathway is behind them. 
that using these tools lets us get maximal exposure anteriorly, hopefully without denuding the backside of the frontal beak. Um, and I'll try to use the microdebrider to clean up some of those bony remnants. And then we can kind of see that circular aperture into the frontal. We know the anterior ethmoid artery is back here. We found it as one of our four landmarks, middle turbinate, orbit, beak, anterior ethmoid artery. This cellular wall between the two can be Im improved so that we can turn that into the half horseshoe that's created by the shape of the brain and the anterior cranial base. I'm going to just clean that up here. So here anteriorly, 70 degree scope puts us so that we can see directly up into the frontal sinus, a tool that lets us rotate and be able to cut. Be cautious when you're doing this because you've got to know where this thing is because this thing is the, that triple crown that uh, Winston was going for. And to try to skeletonize that right back creates that appearance of the half horseshoe, the tail of the horseshoe that ends in the anterior ethmoid artery. And as it comes up, seeing right up into the frontal sinus with a 70 degree scope and being able to determine if we've gotten all that thick sludge and um, allergic fungal mucin that Jeff was talking about yesterday out of it. So if anybody else wants, I'm going to start to fresh on the other side and can just hang out at this station. But I'd also encourage you guys, if you'd like to, to be at your station to practice what Winston showed you. Practice looking angled endoscopy into the uh, frontal sinus to get views like this one. Uh, I'll be here just doing the opposite side so we can do the um, complex cellularity of the frontal sinus on the opposite side. Last thing before we go is just again to see those walls once it's dissected middle turbinate orbit, which I'll encourage you to go through, find the medial rectus, see what orbital fat looks like, skull base all the way from the posterior ethmoids to where it makes that inflection point here at the anterior ethmoid artery and starts to turn upward. And then that turns into posterior table of the frontal sinus, the one septation in this patient that sits between a superorbital ethmoid cell and the frontal sinus proper. The half horseshoe because the brain ends here. So anything medial here, can I have a hoseman please? Um, it, we can actually even go further medial because we're in front of the brain. We're not tracking adequately because we would show that we were anterior to the, uh, to the brain. But you can see that because you can see the brain there. You can see the brain there. You can see the brain here. That's posterior table. Everything else is in front of. Does that sound okay, Greg? Beautiful.